One of the curious things about PHP, and honestly, one of the things I dislike the most, is that PHP doesn't really have arrays. PHP only has associative arrays, which are dictionaries uh, where you have key value mappings. And what we call normal arrays in PHP is really just a dictionary with integer-based keys. Um, that's usually not a problem. If you want to write an array, you can still do it. But arrays also prove to be very sharp knives on PHP. And since they're also flexible, it's easy for us to always reach out to them even when they're not the best tool for us to use. So on this video, I want to show a few situations where you think it's much better to use something like an object instead of an associative array to represent something in our applications. Integer-based associative arrays, which I'm just going to refer to as regular arrays, are fine. If you want to have a vector, if you want to have a list of items, you have to use an array. That's completely fine. If you want to serialize some data and return some JSON, for example, completely fine to use associative arrays as well. And there are lots of situations where I find them very acceptable. But there are also lots of situations where I think an object represents what we want to do in a much better way for several reasons. So let's jump into the code and talk a little bit about that. Imagine you want to describe these settings. Well, if you reach out to an array, you could do something like this. You're going to have an array, a dictionary, and uh, maybe they have notifications enabled, they have their theme set as dark, and they are on the UTC time zone. So you have this, something within your application is returning in this, maybe it's on the user map model, maybe it's a different model, but you, you have this array right here. And you start to pass that to different functions. So you have a function that does something that takes an array and uh, it does something with that data. Maybe we want to notify the user. So we do notify user and we want to use the time zone. So we do settings, time zone, something like that. Well, this works. This is great. We used array. We used something that PHP ships with. It's pretty easy to use. It's pretty easy to write and we can just pass it around. Well, the problem with this is first, within an array, you can never be sure of what's inside it because we cannot handle this at the type level. So if I were to call this function and let's do something like this, we're going to echo the user is on the, let me switch this, something like that. And then we're going to notify user and we're going to pass user settings. If I were to execute this, okay, the user is on the UTC time zone. If I were to pass this, we get an undefined array key. Now, notice this is not a fatal error. This is just a notice. So the code would execute with potentially wrong data. That's one of the first problems with arrays for this use specifically. You cannot assert what you have on the type level. So what you can do, and um, most static analysis tools are going to support this, is you can describe the shape of an array. So you could do something like, okay, have an array, and you know that notifications is going to be a boolean, um, theme is going to be a string, and time zone is also going to be a string. And if we were to hover over this, PHP Storm will tell us what keys are available. If I were to do this, I should get auto completion of like notifications, for example, has notifications. And if I were to hover over this, well, PHP server is not showing. Oh, there we go. It's, it's a bowl or a mixed value. So most IDEs will understand this, but this doesn't really solve the problem, which is we could receive some unexpected values. And if we receive those unexpected values, we will not necessarily crash. So what some people do is they'll do something like if array key exists and uh, we want to check the time zone within this array, if it doesn't exist, we want to, I don't know, we want to crash. So we can do something like this. And if we were to run this code, well, we're crashing because we don't have a time zone. Well, this is very error prone. You have to do a lot of work to keep all of this in sync and you don't really have any guarantees. So in those cases, I think it makes much more sense to turn this into an object. Will it have to type a little bit more? Yes, but it's much more reliable. So you can do something like you can create a class called user settings. You can use property promotion to set up which properties you're going to have. So you're going to say 
Okay, we're gonna have um, what the user has notifications available. Why is this complaining? Does it think I'm on page? Okay, this is weird. We're definitely on 8.3. So we're gonna have notifications. Uh, we're gonna have a theme and we're gonna have a time zone. There we go. And now we can, instead of having this, we can instantiate a new instance of user settings and uh, we can even use named arguments here. So we're gonna do something like this. There we go. And now we can get rid of this. We can replace this with user settings. We can get rid of this. And now we know from a type level what we have available. So if I type settings, there we go. I know that we have time zone as a string. And now it is impossible for me to pass something valid because a user settings is always gonna be an instance of this and it is always going to require those properties. Sure, I could have some properties that are optional or something like that. I could go a little bit further. Well, we can still pass something that's invalid. Check this out. So I'm gonna say that settings, oh, we already have that right here. What if I were to say that the time zone is this? And then if I were to run notify user and pass user settings. Well, it works, but it shouldn't, right? The time zone doesn't exist. So you can go a little bit further and you can also type this. Maybe we could use a date time zone right here. So instead of passing a string, we would have to pass a new date time zone. We could say something like UTC. This is not going to be an instance of that. So we can call a method on it, call get name. If we were to run this, okay, we're in the UTC time zone. What if I pass something invalid? Well, it's crashing because date time zone is enforcing that we must pass a valid time zone. So essentially we have a much more, I, I don't want to say secure, but I want to say straightforward code base. Our program has a harder time reaching invalid state. We have auto completion. We know what to expect in those objects. Within an array, you never know what to expect. You might have a key, you're not really sure. You can pass an empty array and that's gonna be valid. So that saves us a lot of trouble. In another situation, this is something I actually implemented recently, not exactly like this, but um, it was this concept of having a graph on a UI and this graph would have data containing two periods. It looks something like this. We have a graph and we have something called current period. And um, we also have something called previous period. And then we think, okay, this is pretty easy to implement with an array. We just have key values and we can just pass this around. And here you have some more complicated data structures, but to keep it simple, let's just say that we had a count here. So uh, you would have something like in the current period, you had a thousand records or anything like that. And on the previous period, you have something like 500 or something like that. So you could pass the data structure around. You'd still have all of the problems we've mentioned with arrays, but you could pass it around. But besides that, we also needed to do some calculations on top of that and, and things with this data. A common thing was, what was the increase between the current period and the previous period? So we know that in this case, it was a hundred percent, right? We could write something like the increase is going to be, you know, you pass a function with the current period and the previous period and you do something, blah, 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 blah. You could write this, it would work, it's fine, but that's very hard to maintain. First, you don't really know what the shape of the data looks like. Refactoring becomes much harder. Imagine that you have tons of these arrays in your code base, right? And you want to change something. You got to make sure that you went through all of them and that you've updated things in all of them and even then, you might not be sure because you cannot enforce this on the type level. Whereas with objects, with any modern IDE, first, if you change something, the objects might become invalid and your code is going to crash. But with any modern uh, IDE, you can go through all of the occurrences of the object updated. You can see all of them. You can do automated refactoring with this. So this is much, much easier. But going back to this, one of the, the common questions was, what's the percentage, right? and uh, we would have to calculate this. So in this case, um, you had a 100% increase, which would be denoted as one. So notice that this leads us to a very anemic model. We don't really have behavior in our application, which also makes it much harder to maintain. Now, if we had instead an object, let's say that we have a graph, and then we would have a constructor that would accept the current period, and we're gonna keep those as arrays for now. So we would have the current period and we would have the previous period. There we go. 
Now, instead of having this as an array, we could instantiate a graph. So let me just redo this. So now we have an object and something that my friend Sean McCall said that I found to be very wise was you cannot tell arrays to do things, but you can definitely tell objects to do things. It, it didn't say the exact same, but it was something like that. So you probably heard of the, uh, the heuristic tell, don't ask. So invoke behavior within your objects. And now instead of calculating this percentage, we could simply say increase or something like that. And then within our graph object, we would have an increase method that, you know, maybe would return an integer and you could just do your calculation here, right? Something like that. Maybe it would return a specialized type like a percentage, um, which would also enforce those invariants. So you can go bonkers with this. Um, in real life, the way I implemented this is we actually have objects that represent those periods. So we would have a period for the current period and uh, we would have also a period for the previous period. And then the object has some behavior like calculating the percentage increase between the periods and whatnot. With this, you're getting rid of arrays that don't really mean anything. You know, what does that mean? That doesn't really mean anything, especially if you're accepting that as an argument in your methods. You can never be sure of, of what it contains. And you're making your software a lot more expressive. This is very expressive. This is easy to refactor. You have a single place to change this. You can see all of the usages within your code base. You can enforce things at the type level. Okay, now the question is, where should I use those associative arrays? I think there are lots of usages. Um, if you're doing simple operations within your code base, for example, something that you might do is you might want to partition some data. So you could do something like previous period, current period, and assuming that you have, for example, uh, a larval collection here. You could do data set, partition, and you would pass a function here that would do something. And you're just going to use those values sparingly through your code base, through a limited time. That's, that's how I like to think. If you have something that's very short-lived, you're only using that variable for a little while, maybe within a method or something like that, I think it's fine to use those associative arrays. If you have data that's going to be serialized, for example, you have uh, some user data that's going to be serialized, uh, so they're gonna have their name or something. Um, ideally, you could also have those within objects. So maybe you have a user class that has a two array method or something like that that returns an array representation of that instance, and then you can serialize that. But if you're just serializing data, returning data to the client, that sort of thing, I think arrays are fine. If you're just using them sparingly in, and they're short-lived, you're using them within the method or using them in a very limited manner within a class, I think they're fine. But if those arrays actually represent a concept within your system, like a graph does, like a period does, like user settings do, like your theme, this could be an enum, right? We could have theme here and uh, we could have an enum theme. Uh, you could have a dark theme and you could have a light theme, something like that. And then you could guarantee at the type level that you're, return, that you're receiving something that is valid. You cannot receive invalid data here. But yeah, associative arrays for those situations are fine. If they represent a concept within your system, or if you would like to be able to have the array tell you things, that is invoke behavior, then I would say they should probably be an object. So yeah, very short video, just my two cents on when to use those associative arrays and when to use objects. If they're short-lived, if you're only using them apparently throughout a class or something like that, they're fine. You don't have to keep track of them. You don't have to remember them in other places. You can just look at your code base. Okay, what does the key something on this array mean? So you just have to go back one function and see. That's fine. If they represent concepts within your application and you're passing them around to different members, then they should probably be an object that's more expressive. The object's name and namespace themselves represent something. If you have an object period within the context of a graph and you can express that within your object, that gives you a lot of context already. You know exactly what you're talking about. Whereas if you have a variable period that's just an array, you don't really know what it is. You probably have to run a dump and die or something like that and execute the code base to see um, what keys it has, that sort of thing. And that's really, really hard to maintain. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just I think this is one of those things. It's a very small change, 
All that involves really is just writing a little bit more code, but it does make a world of difference in the quality of your code base. So let me know what you think and I see you guys on the next video.